welcome back to another edition of the Pitch Putt and Puff Podcast. My name is Roger, a.k.a. RGB. Before we get rolling with our guest tonight, this just want to give a quick shout-out to our sponsor, GolferCBD.com. Uh, make sure you check them out. Use promo code PPP10 for 10% off. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is this performance spray. So the performance spray, uh, this is Golfer CB, CBD performance spray is one of the strongest available on the market. It delivers 30 milligrams of CBD and 30 milligrams of CBG uh, with each application. And with 200 applications in a 30 milliliter spray bottle, Golfer CBD performance spray delivers exceptional value to the dedicated golfer. So this here um, is 1,200 milligrams total in the bottle. This is something I really think is just going to bring your focus to the game. Uh, take away those little minor aches and pains so you don't have to think about those and you can think about knocking down that five footer um but yeah make sure everybody checks out golfercbd.com golfercbdusa on instagram so make sure you check them out i really appreciate the opportunity to work with them uh most of the episodes are going to be brought to you by them for for a little while here so uh it's a really cool uh cool opportunity for the pitch putt puff so for, uh, for them supporting us, one thing I ask you to do is go and support them, golfercbd.com. Uh, use promo code PPP10 for 10% off of all your purchases. They have a bunch of different uh, options, but the spray was one of them I was getting into tonight. We'll, we'll be talking about the performance cream. They got gummies as well, the CBD gummies, and they also have the recovery uh, cream as well. So really appreciate those guys uh for supporting the pitch putt and puff also got to give a shout out to 420 bliss located at 740 Hoosick road in troy new york right up in the walmart plaza make sure you stop in there check them out everything you're looking for in the cannabis world they have flowers pre-rolls edibles vapes disposables uh they got the drinks up there tinctures i mean you name it they got it everything you're looking for let them know the Pitch Punt and Puff crew sent you. Ty and the crew will take great carry up there. Um, definitely one of the nicest dispensaries in the area. Uh, also, Trouble Off the Tea, perfect sponsor sponsor for the for me, especially uh, my biggest struggle in my game is Trouble Off the Tea. I might have to listen to the book again, see if it straightens out my swing. Um, but that really, the book has nothing to do with that. The book is awesome. Uh, it's narrated by Jake Adams. You can find it on Spotify. Also, on the website, a bunch of different options and hats, shirts, um, quarter zips. Check it out. Promo code RGB for 15% off as a site-wide, as well as promo code PUFF for buy one, get one free on the polos. Make sure you take advantage of that. Um, Marty's got some big things going on. He's got a podcast coming out, working on the second book. So stay tuned to more from Trouble Off the T. Uh, tonight, we're going to bring in our guest. Uh, shortly here, uh, so stay tuned. We'll take a quick break and then we'll get into it. And welcome back to the Pitch Putt and Puff podcast. Once again, my name is Roger, aka RGB. Uh, we're going to introduce our guest tonight. We're going to introduce Rick from the CGA, the Cannabis Golf Association. Rick, appreciate you jumping on, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's always uh, always nice to be on uh, on a podcast or or anything really that you know, has a voice and people are listening because that helps spread the message. So thank you for having me. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the whole cannabis industry? Well, um, cannabis industry wise, uh, started well before any industry. It was way back when the medical side of things, uh, was going strong and uh, I was a caregiver at the beginning and I'm still a caregiver in the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, as we unraveled wreck here in Michigan, I, I took notice of the event space and the networking needs of such a young industry. And it's still quite taboo or, you know, was in that early 2015 state. Um, and there wasn't a lot of networking op opportunities, you know, and a lot of people didn't know how to network. So <clears throat> I figured golf was a great one. You always see people doing different kind of outings for charities or for political matters or for whatever, family gatherings, all kinds of things people use golf for. So I was like, well, that, that would be, you know, something to try. So 
I did uh, the first year I had 114 golfers out on Indian Lake Hills over in um, Eau Claire, Michigan. Nice. And uh, <clears throat> that uh, that was kind of a test run. The the course was kind of, you know, wanted to see how it was going to look and what it was going to be like. And we set up uh, sponsors at their hole. So mm-hmm. the hole that they sponsor, they, they get to set up a, a whatever, a tent. Uh, if they, you know, have a branded tent or whatever, they get to set that up at the tee box and then, you know, kind of engage with all the golfers. So, um, <clears throat> and as I was, I was laying it out, I was – this has been going for about five years now. So uh, it's been, you know, gaining speed and I figure out how, how it works best. And uh, what I see by just its nature is that a lot of companies really enjoy to bring out their mar- marketing team and their sales team for the, for the interaction at the booth and at the hole they sponsor. And then they kind of bring out their management and ownership to play in the golf. So that, that really loads, you know, loads them all up in there and, and gets in there and everybody kind of has good communication. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, of course as well, I've been able to engage, uh, some pretty large political party members of our state, um, our attorney nice. general, uh, we've had, uh, t- well, two state representatives this year, we'll have three state representatives. Um, they come and play and, they meet the community, they meet the industry, they meet the businesses that are in their constituencies and even those that aren't in theirs and it gives them perspective. So mm-hmm. as something starts to happen in their district, you know, they can say, well, I seen something over here that it was working really well, or, you know, maybe I had an idea <laughs> that coming to our district, we could readjust or whatever. So um, having those lawmakers in there is is a really good thing. Um, yeah. Also a good opportunity for some of the businesses again, to kind of have that communication with their leadership. So definitely yeah. helps on uh, as the bills get going, that'll be all summer this year. So nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So th- like that's golf and weed are two things that bring people from all walks of life together. If you really mm-hmm. think about it, even if it's, you know, from a business scrambler, even just to go play around the golf and you get paired up with random people. It could be yeah. whoever. It, and by the end of the round, everybody's getting along and having a great time, you know, and the same thing. Everybody's right. smoking a joint and you just start passing around. It doesn't matter who they are. Well, it does, they could right. be like back in high school. It could be the jocks with the hippies, with the uh, guys that played in the band, to the kid who ran track. It doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's right. a variety of guys and it's all, it's something like that. Those two things really bring people from two different walks of life together. And that's a great idea you took with that to take advantage of it, to especially get in the political side of it. The people who out mm-hmm. really do make the decisions is the biggest thing for us right now, especially in New York. We're having a we're starting to make, you know, we just got legalized maybe two years ago now dispensaries. We had like two dispensaries in the whole state in the first year. Um, uh-huh. But now they're literally popping up every other day. There's a new one opening, which is great. It's really it's, sure. it's different variants of um where you can go you get the different things it's not all the same product all that kind of thing but i hope everybody goes and checks out my sponsor 420 bliss obviously but uh other than that so um when did you start playing golf how old were you when you started getting into golf uh it would have been back back when i was 16 or so you know that it was it was one of those things we're kind of a small town uh middle america here and um it was one of those things, me and a buddy is like, let's ditch school first hour and get the hell out of here right away yep. and go play golf. <laughs> so we'd go play golf all day. And of course, you know, third hole, fourth hole in, you fire one up behind the tree and make sure that nobody's watching or smelling it. Yep. And um, yeah, that was 96 or so. And uh, yeah, ever since then, you know, I, I've noticed it's part of the culture too. It's part of the quiet culture of golf. Yeah. So many, whether again, business person, judge, lawyer, uh, regular Joe uh, is out there probably possibly burning one. If mm-hmm. not their own, maybe Jim or Harold brought one and yeah, I'll hit it this time, you know? Um, and it, it's weird how it, how that plant and golf 
um, allows that guard to come down a little bit and you have a little acceptance. Um, and that's what I find really good for the, the networking is you get these CEOs and you get these political figures and they're out there in nature and they're out there golfing and their guard is down because it's calm and it's, it's recessive. You're, you're, you're just chill. You're, you're, you're into the moment. It's calm. And, and when you, somebody approaches you about something, it's a lot easier to intake it. Um, it seems like more receptive to certain things especially in business you know especially if you already know that you're there to network so you know Mm -hmm. when somebody approaches you you're uh you're more engaged in it then you know some of my other festivals i hold are larger musical festivals and it's really hard to speak to anybody when bone thugs is in your ear right Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) that's cool so how did um so once you did your first tournament, is that when you started the um, the Cannabis Golf Association? Pretty much right from the jump, or was it a little? Bit no, faster? actually, it was. Kind of, yeah, it was kind of a process. Uh, this has been five years. I started off uh, again, like I said, the first one was 114 golfers, and that was on a 27 hole course. Um, the lady gave me 18 holes the first year. She's like, "Let's see what happens." I was like, "I'm telling you, I'll sell it out," mm-hmm. and so I did, and it went well. And then the following years, I was like, I want your whole course. I want all 27 holes. So since then, um, the second year and, and all the way up till now, we have 240 golfers at that outing, um, 27 sponsored holes, and uh, usually about 400, 500 people on site. Wow. Um, yeah, and then my spring event started about – this will be the third year. So three years ago, I decided to just – have a small spring event i had another course that was a private uh country club that said that they would engage in some kind of this kind of thing that i've been doing um and i was like okay it's only 18 holes it's going to be smaller um but it's a private course it's it's a private club Mm -hmm. um again those little pieces of engagement help break the stigma so right. this private club and this, uh, you know, members only situation is now allowing a cannabis golf outing to occur on their property and in their in their world, you know, yep. um, also helps, you know, some of these other people in town or wherever else that maybe is like, wow, OK, if some of these places like this are starting to accept it, maybe I can open my mind up to it a little bit, too. Yep. Yeah, so we so, have we have something playing up here. Uh, I'm doing something with uh, New York Auto Flower, the Helium Collective, and a few other sponsors are on board. Um, we're doing a cannabis cup on July 18th. So we have nice. similar thing. It's going to be a scramble. We're trying to get like vendors set up at different tee boxes. We're going to do like a cash prize, closest to the pin prizes, like cash prizes for that, as well as uh, <clears throat> longest drive. So. It's really going to be the first first one in this area. It's something awesome. different. It's tough. Um, like certain courses didn't really want anything to do with us. And mm-hmm. then the one that does, it's kind of didn't want to waste a weekend on it. So we have to do it on a Thursday. So we definitely, uh, we're starting to fill up now that, the, that it's starting to get a little bit. Hey, closer. I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little tip and That's, take it for right. what it's worth. Um, for me, I've been playing the Monday card. So my my tournament, this one coming up is on a Monday. And I chose that that springtime Monday one um, because I have a lot of business engagement. So dispensaries and grow facilities. Who the fuck doesn't want to take a Monday off and go golfing and still get paid for it, right? Right. <laughs> That's actually so, a great idea. It is. So yeah, do you know? Think about if if the, sometimes these courses will be like, well, our our weekends are you know kind of uh, you know our money makers. So you know if you could put it in the week, sometimes I would aim for that that Monday or maybe even a Friday. But I think mm-hmm. Mondays that that sales pitch is pretty easy. That's that's actually a great idea. Um, yeah, I didn't even think of that because yeah, long weekends you're gonna absolutely. Like you said, yeah. who doesn't want a Monday off? Shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the worst day of the week for me is a Monday. Right. Um, Go smoke weed and play golf. I'll pay you for it. Yeah, right. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Shit. Shit. So what <laughs> events you got planned for this summer? I know you got something coming up uh, in June, right? I seen something for June. 
Yeah, June 3rd, um, Orchard Hills Country Club. That'll be uh, the first one in a couple weeks. And then I have uh, June 22nd, which is going to be over in Coldwater, um, kind of more in the middle of the state of Michigan. And uh, then September 28th is uh, my later later one in the fall. As far as the golf outings, um, nice. work working on a few other things too but uh golf outing wise that's that's where i'm aiming i'm gonna try three this year and eventually i, I want to build this thing up where it can it can sustain moving out of state going to different locations um but i want to be able to make sure that i do it properly too because when you go out of state with all the different laws you want to you know you want to figure them all out as you approach it so right yeah yeah, yeah new york's regulations are pretty tight like for example, we can't have a dispensary come and bring product to the course. They can deliver it to the course, but they can't bring and set up a booth and do it that right. way. They can, they can, we can set up a menu and they can order off the menu and we can have someone deliver it. But that's uh -huh. the only way we can do it through a dispensary there. So it's okay. it's, it's tricky. We got to go through the process, though. You know, we're going to set up right. like a, a pitch button puff menu and hopefully, you know, people order off of that and something like right. something, to, something of that nature we just got to be creative with it until we yeah. figure figure out all the fine details mm -hmm. um so uh was i was just going to ask you something about so do you have any of these are any of these tournaments closer to on the eastern side of michigan closer to new york um or are you on the other side no, yeah i'm pretty much on the other side at least that's where i've been holding these um i have had some interest from uh some Detroit courses and some stuff more over towards uh, towards that way. Um, mm -hmm. I do plan on maybe trying to get one of these in Massachusetts, um, New York, New Jersey. Okay. But like you said, I I haven't really dove into looking quite yet either. But I can only imagine when you call a golf course even over there, it's yeah. probably like. Excuse me, uh, what did you say, sir? I would like to hold a cannabis golf networking opportunity for your golfing guy, and they'll they they'll be like, click. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. Like even I hit up a couple of courses to do reviews, and a few of them got back to me or cool about it. Other ones, yeah. um, something I got one email. This is something we're absolutely not interested in. <laughs> um, just stuff like that, and I'm like, all right, yeah. I, I get it. I mean, it's still it's part know, of it. It's yeah, part of, it's, it's like part of the grind. It's, it's like door knocking, you know. Yeah. You just keep busting and knock, 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 and you'll get one that's gonna gonna be right, and it works. So, yeah. so at your holes, that's what I wanted to ask you. At all the holes you have, is it mostly like you have like uh, certain like, for example, we have Jaunty up here. She was just on the other day, so like you would have Jaunty mm -hmm. at like the tenth hole, kind of thing. Is it all different types of vendors? Is that how you do it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have different uh, businesses, local dispensaries, um, brands, grow facilities, laboratories. Um, we have uh, cannabis book uh, authors. Um, Cheech and Chong's brand will be there blended with the uh, Courage and Cannabis book that I'm in. We're going to have a blended booth there. Um okay. Yeah, so it's really it's really engaging, and it really I really allowed the uh, sponsors to do whatever marketing they want. So some people have that spin the wheel thing. Some people may have like a little plastic little golf thing where they do some chipping in a bucket thing for a prize. Um, here in Michigan, our rules are cannabis can be gifted. Um, it can be uh given away and you know people are allowed to give others donations by like state laws like those that's how that that can work but right. um we really just kind of keep it especially with the licensed people involved we just kind of keep it to what we can do with them so like with same thing it just keep it right to the the state laws they can give away as well mm -hmm. um like you said you know they can give things away or whatever um and then that drives people to their companies. So yeah. if somebody gets a pre-roll and they're like, man, I really like that. It looks like it came from so-and-so. They're on my way home. I'm going to slide by one day. Or they might uh, they might get a coupon um, from a dispensary that is blended with um, a brand that might also be at the 
golf outing and then again it kind of drives like this coupon is free it's something free but you got to go to the dispensary to to get that free thing and then of course you're probably going to spend some money too right so yeah so it's kind of it's kind of that vibe um and people people enjoy it i also have uh this year the first year i'm doing i'm kind of overlaying some of my music festival things in with this and i have some uh wonderful talent out of ohio uh tantalizing tigers and uh or tantalizing tiger maybe it's not pluralized anyway <laughs> um she she does uh the the lollipop dancing um things or the stilt walking and the fire Fire, okay. fire juggling and all those kind of vibes. Um, so I'm kind of bringing that. Um, I'm going to have them kind of walking around on stilts and and enjoying some of the golfers. The golf is kind of secondary. Like right. there are people that take it seriously to some sure. degree, but for the most part, it's really secondary to the to the atmosphere. Yeah, um, the more real just focus like a is kick it and hang out with everybody, network. Yeah, and just yeah, yeah. enjoy, enjoy yeah. the day. Yep. Yeah, and it's the real focus is those people that come from one side of the state. Um, you know, we'll say a, a, a young grow that just came online with a Class C. They don't know nobody, but they come over here to the west side of the state, and they, and then now suddenly they're in three different dispensaries they didn't even know existed. Neither one of them know each other existed, but now they do, and they're being able to, you know, <clears throat> break bread. So that's awesome. That's awesome. It's really, it really is cool what you're doing, man. Especially, I mean, you're now you're spreading your wings throughout the state. And that's just going to open more doors for you to get outside of the state and do bigger things. I think for you. So, shout out to you for that. So, um, what's who's some of the guests you've had at these events? And I've seen on on the IG page you've had some really cool guests on there. Tell yeah, us a little bit about yeah. that. So I noticed when I was starting these, one of those things that you want to, because I'm not necessarily, I mean. I, I'm somebody that people know, so to speak, uh, in my small community, but nothing to be like, hey, go to Rick's golf outing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that early stages, it needed something that was going to draw people to it, other than just the cannabis aspect and and such. So um, Rob Deere was a, a friend of mine, uh, big, big league slugger in the in the eighties and early nineties, he, uh, he came who, out and who played, play for? Uh, who do you play he played for? from, he played from Milwaukee and he was also yeah. a uh, pitching coach for the Cubs. I remember the name. That's why I had, I thought I was thinking, I was honestly thinking the Brewers. I was. Yeah. That's yeah. Funny. It was the Brewers. Here, just a second. Oh. I was just thinking that that's crazy that it was the Brewers. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I might have had that yeah. card. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I probably had that card. So he um he came out, and obviously being here in the Midwest, a lot of people recognize him. He also played for the Tigers as well, so um, Michigan recognized him, and uh, so he was a he was a big draw the first year, and then. Um, the following year I had our state attorney general, um, and that was a huge draw, draw, um, also that's had, awesome. that's a yeah, huge that one, that's a huge, yeah, hit. it was because she was, it was an election year. So, I mean, I, she was kind of, kind of piggybacking off of each other, so to speak, but, um, I was able to raise her some money for her reelection. She's kept us very safe in the cannabis space throughout the throughout the last six years um mm -hmm. nobody's getting arrested for just simple cannabis things right. you know not going going to jail so that's been a blessing and it's helped you know a lot of companies and people sustain life i mean you know it's been a way of life for a long time prior to all of this right and for some people it's it's been a continuing way of life and you know the less uh worry and regulation we have to have especially over our medical programs um the better so right. um so yeah and then so that was that was really cool and then uh, darren mccarty um came out to uh one of my spring events he was uh i think they won it four times uh the detroit red wings uh 
Okay. He was on all their Stanley Cup championships. Nice. Yeah, he's here in Michigan. He had a little bit of he's got a little bit of a leg in uh Michigan cannabis. I think <clears throat> I think he still owns a a brand. It's either I don't know if it's flower or if it's an edible, but either way, he's kind of in the space here in Michigan as well. And then, of course, he's got like a rock band and he does a bunch of other charity shit. That's he's a pretty cool, pretty cool That's guy. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I always try. I always try to and it doesn't always happen. Um, this year, this June 3rd, we'll have Randy Lanier. Um, not a lot of people know his story. I didn't even. Uh until recently he uh he did 27 years of a life sentence for uh smuggling cannabis and he pretty much funded his indie race car career and race car career um for i don't know i don't remember how many years but basically from cannabis was there a netflix uh, documentary on this yes yes i remember okay see me i got a pretty good memory yeah, you do. This. I remember this. <laughs> yeah. I, Netflix documentary. And he, yeah. and he's amazing. I mean, like I said, he did 27 years of what he thought was going to be a life sentence. I'm not sure exactly how he got out, but he's now currently um, up in New Jersey with a, a brand in a, a store, I believe, starting up. Um, at least a brand. I'm not sure if it's just a grow facility or what, but Oh, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'm excited I remember. To have the, him. I remember once you said the car thing. I remember. I remember the documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing story. Really cool guy too. Um, yeah. Really excited to to have him up. And that uh, that was uh, he's tied with Denver Cole, which is a local, okay. yep, local grow here um, in Michigan. And I think they have they're multi state. They'll they're elsewhere as to, as well. So. Yeah, I had one of their former, I guess she's now a former employee on here, not uh, back around 420. I don't know what happened, but so I guess she had a falling out with the company, unfortunately. Yeah, but, there's something, I guess. There's with there's always something with, with people. You get enough of them together, there's things happen. <laughs> yeah, she was, she, I mean, she still, even after the fact, she spoke good about them and everything else. So I heard good things about their products and what they do. Um, yeah. Good. So yeah, I've sure. never had uh, any issues with any businesses, uh, you know, business transactions I've had with uh, a lot of people in in general. Right. So like when it, cannabis, it gives you a vibe. And even in business, like, you know, you're talking to a good person or you're not like usually within reasonable amount of time. And, and when you're doing commerce and you're doing business with somebody, generally, um, you know. But it, also in this industry, I've noticed that you may get duped, right? Yeah. You may get tricked a little. Um, and sometimes that happens. But once you know, then you, you just start building up little blocks. And then I see these red flags in people when I meet them. And it's like, oh, okay, well... Um, that was definitely a red flag and I'm not, I am not messing right. with you. Right. <laughs> like, cause I've already, I've already had that issue. <laughs> right. I, I already met you. I already met a version of you. I know exactly yeah. how this is going to go. You know? Yep. Yep. So we get stronger as we, uh, as we tumble up and down. For sure. <laughs> it's the only way to do it really, man, is learn the hard way. Learn yeah. The hard way. So you also your your IG is uh, Mr. Fun Guy four twenty. What's uh you get into a little bit of the psilocybin side as well? Yeah, a little bit. Um, when I first started uh, caregiving, I that was kind of the motto I I went under. I had a um, a uh, I guess it would be a guided mushroom th uh, experience, but it wasn't okay. not like what you're thinking. It's not yeah. like the, the psilocybin one. It's uh. It was more of the woods. So like okay. people, people would have, they may have 200 acres of woods or whatever, and they would have me come out and identify mushrooms for them. And then they would mm. then understand why that mushroom was growing there. If it was edible or not, if it was good for them or not. Um, oh, and, wow. uh, yeah, they would learn how to, you know, eat from their woods a little bit. So, huh. I thought it was more <laughs> the psychedelic side of it. Yeah. Oh, that's, well, that's and I've cool. done that too. 
but yeah, the the natural, uh, just raw oyster mushrooms, turkey tails, you know, lion's mane, um, cordyceps, all those grow cool. pretty abundantly in nature, and cool. and uh, yeah, I I like to chase them down. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. That's a shocker. I thought I definitely thought it was going the other way. Yeah, definitely. I thought it was going the other way. All right, so I usually like to wrap up with three questions. Um, so what I'll ask you, we'll, I was going to mix, I'll mix in a little bit of golf with with the cannabis side of it. What's the, what's your favorite strain you ever smoked? All cool. time. It's always, it's always so tricky to say mm -hmm. what would be the favorite because um, subjectable. But uh, I guess if I had to lean on one, if I was like left on an island somewhere, that's what I was just going to say to you. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to I'd have to say Blue Dream just because uh she's mild enough. Um she's mild, but she can be heavy, but she, all around like healing wise, she's mm -hmm. a good healer. So she ain't the, the headiest thing in the world, but uh overall I'd have to say blue dream. It's got a nice taste, nice flavor to it and everything though as well. So it's something you're really not gonna get sick of. Right, right. It's hard to be like I've had enough. <laughs> right. I think mine would be sour diesel. Um, oh, yeah. Just one of the first headies, like after the beasters came and went up here in New York, upstate New York. Um, we started when we first got like the first real heady. Sour diesel was the first one I came across, and this is probably yeah. early two thousands. And that original one I got, the first batch I got, I was like, I never had anything like because we had the beasters, you know the this stuff coming down from Canada, but other than yeah. that, that was, that was next level. And that was probably to this day, my favorite strain <laughs> I ever smoked. Can't find Heck it yeah. anymore though. That, that sucker's gone. It got crossed. I know. Many times it's gone. Yeah. So, um, what's one person you would like to smoke with? Hmm. Morgan Freeman. Okay. Morgan <laughs> yeah. Freeman, that's a good one. Yeah, I, I take some intellect out of that old man. <laughs> <laughs> he's the, he's one of my favorite. He's never really in a bad movie. No, he he <laughs> picks the pretty... movies well. Yeah, he's he's pretty awesome. Mine would probably be I'm a big basketball guy growing up, um, and now he's in the cannabis and golf. Would be uh, Jason Williams, White Chocolate. Used to play. Oh for the, hell yeah! Used to play for yeah. the Kings back in the day. The Kings Fucking guy the was a beast. Yeah, man, that was my guy. It was one of my probably my favorite player of all time. Uh, just the yeah. way he played, I played the same way. Just the no look pass, like when he did that elbow pass. I was in like ninth or tenth grade. I went. I know, like, and, oh. I went downstairs yeah. in my basement and just started practicing, practicing, practicing. <laughs> uh, I attempted it once in a game, in a AAU game, and luckily my coach was uh, my coach pretty much like eighth grade on, besides high school, and. He looked at me. He goes, don't ever do anything like that again. He kept me in the game. My my ass should have got benched because that thing went. I, I did it, and it rolled right across the floor. It was the worst oh. pass I've ever thrown. <laughs> no doubt. Um, and then the last question would be, what's your dream foursome that you'd like to play with? So who are three guys you'd like to put in a group of you to play around the golf? Huh. All right. Uh, Dicka, Jordan, Woods. And Chris McDonald. Okay, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Dicker, so you're a Bears fan over the uh, over the Lions. Yeah, I'm. I, again, being far west side, bottom at the left there. I'm. I'm yeah. almost in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No doubt. Yeah, mine would be mine would be Jason Williams, um, Tiger Woods. Who did I have in my group? <laughs> I have Michael Jordan. And I think John Daly was the other one. Hell those yeah. Would my, those would be my guys Daly. to get out there with. That'd be sick. That'd be a good yeah. time. Because you, you would see Daly and Jordan just over there gambling. <laughs> Jay, Jay Will would be over there smoking a joint. And obviously right. Jordan, Jordan would be dabbling in that with that joint for sure. Right. But, <laughs> man, I really appreciate you jumping on. Um, This was a great conversation. If you have any big events coming up and you want to, you know, closer to, to my side or whatever, even any yeah. events to hop on. Um, hit me up. Feel free to jump back on anything you have to promote. Sure. Uh, where can everybody find you? Um, yeah, like you said, Mr. Fungi underscore 420. Um, 
and uh, Rick Anstis on uh, Facebook is a is an easy way as well. We have CGA official um, IG. So, and then of course we have the CGA uh, official dot org, which is the website and kind of has pretty much everything uh, on that as well. Awesome, awesome. Thank Rick, I man. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, we'll be definitely in contact down the road. I'd hope that I'd love to pop out for sure if I could ever figure out the time and the travel. Yeah, or we'll, with bring, the boys. we'll bring one your way. Like I said, my team, Michael Fang, um, Laura Wainwright. We have uh, we we just got so many great people that help put this on because it's there's a lot of things during the during the event and then of course leading up to it that takes uh, takes a bunch, but. So you have a whole team helping you. Out. You have a whole team helping you out with this. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I, you know, at the early stages, it was just myself. Um, but in the last two to three years, the big cloud company that I have with the music festivals have kind of laid in, and and we've all been doing this together. So uh, that's helped a lot because it's only made it better. So the more people you get involved with these things, sometimes and seeing the same vision um it it's just again it's the cannabis does does that shit it just yeah, kind of happens you know so yep. yeah it's beautiful it really does like i mean you could be and especially now that it's getting less like you know stigmatized or whatever the word is um people are more acceptable to it you see the different mm -hmm. people now like when i go to a local dispensary i'm 40 i'm one of the youngest people in there all these right. older people are going in there. I mean, it could be for medical purposes, but then sure. every once in a while, you'll see the younger kids in there. And it's just cool to see the different people coming in and out of there. You see a kid in his sweatpants yeah. at four in the afternoon. You see a business guy walking in. You know, it's just a whole different right. different walks of life, man. It's just a cool thing. Indeed. But no doubt, man. Hey, man, once again, appreciate your time. Appreciate everybody tuning in. And uh, we'll be back here tomorrow with... Uh, with the weekly um, preview of what's going to pop off for the pitch putt and puff this weekend. Thanks for everybody for tuning in later. Really dope Rick for hopping on. Uh, that was a really good episode. Knowledgeable episode, the cannibal golf, so the cannibal, the cannabis golf association, the C G a check them out on Instagram, the cannabis golf association. Really cool. Um, really cool. But once again, uh, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsor, golfers cbd.com make sure you check them out uh we're gonna go with the spray tonight we'll be talking about the spray the performance spray the golfer cbd performance spray is one of the strongest available on the market delivering 30 milligrams of cbd and 30 milligrams of cbg with each application and with 200 applications in each 30 milliliter spray bottle golfer cbd performance spray delivers except exceptional value to the dedicated golfer uh, make sure you guys check them out golfercbd.com use promo code ppp10 for 10 percent off make sure you take advantage of this uh really appreciate these guys supporting the podcast looking forward to having them on to really give you guys the breakdown of what all these other products do from the gummies to the creams um recovery cream performance cream all these great products really excited to see um hear more about them but de definitely go check them out golfercbd.com Appreciate everybody tuning in and listening to the Pitch Butt Buff podcast. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, um, and we'll be back with another episode to recap what's going to happen for this week. Later. Fairway Mike. Hey, man. <laughs> Fairway Mike. Hey, man.